Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow Gaming and another terrain video and another dungeon tile video. Um, so this is what the third system I've constructed on the channel. Uh, may even be the fourth if you include the Warhammer quest tiles I made. Um, and we'll touch on that in a moment. So what's the reason for this? It's because I was never very happy with either of them. They were of the previous ones. Uh, so we started off, just a little recap of tiles like this. So this is um, a little tile with a 2.5D wall on it and slots in so you could clip it together. Um, great, the wall, uh, it helps because all the tiles are grey so the wall helps uh, show you where there's separation between this and say I've got cavern tile here but the next room is you can see clearly see that this is a separation there's a wall here that's great um but it always took seemed to take a bit too long to set up with pushing in the sort of bit here and then slotting the tile onto it and to build up a room made solely out of these two by two square tiles just seemed to take an age so then I came up with uh, the magnetic tile system so these are just walls they have a magnetic strip at the bottom and these slot onto a um, magnetic sheet and so you can fit loads of these on really quickly and get set up quickly great problem with this is uh, you've got this wall which impedes player sight. It looks great but it please impedes player sight and I think as a tray maker um, you want something to look as good as possible so this looks the best but practically probably not the best solution to use. Does that mean I won't use it? It does not because there are times when I can see a um, system like this being of high use particularly if the encounter is really important perhaps a boss battle encounter where the combat's going to be more tactical so line of sight and cover becomes more important then yeah i'm definitely going to be using this but i wanted to go back to like the traditional tile system and see if there was a solution and really it kind of i've already hit on the solution when after i made these a few years back i went to make my own Warhammer Quest and I made sort of 3D 2.5D tiles for that rather than what I do now which is just print out the PDFs onto cardstock and make my own actual cardstock tiles. I made my own Warhammer Quest tiles out of foam and in there laid the solution between that and looking at the Hero Quest board was the solution. Um, I would make it wallless, I'd bring down the wall so there wouldn't be any walls. But then how would you know the difference between just laying out all this grey? You don't have it as grey, you have your corridors grey, like on the uh, uh, Hero Quest board, and all the rooms are different coloured, but not only different coloured, but they have a different pattern on the squares. If you look at the Hero Quest board, you can see that here, and we're just going to mimic that with the tiles. Um, and maybe take some inspiration from Warhammer Quest. So what this video will be, it won't be necessarily a how to make tiles as such because they're pretty much the same as this. I'll quickly go over it as a recap so you don't have to watch this video but if you do want a bit more information watch this video and then I'll just show you the different tiles that I made and that's the other thing I'm not just going to be making two by two tiles I'm going to be utilizing sort of Warhammer Quest by making some of them will be for sure they're useful but there will be corridor tiles so they'll be like four by two and even longer possibly I'm planning um six by two um whatever and the rooms just won't be made up of these there'll be um I'm going to plan to make three different size rooms uh, that can be combined to make one big room. So there'll be a 4x2, four a 4x4 four four, and a 6x4 I'm planning to make and then obviously the 4x2 four and 4x4 uh, four four go together to form the same size as the bigger room and they go together. Um, let me just show you what I mean. So we'll have the 4x2 sort of tile uh, this is, I've already made these, so this is recorded after the fact. 
you'll have a 4x4 board and you will have a 6x4 board and so these are going to be rooms and so I could have two I have three individual size rooms of different sizes I can have two rooms of the same size and I can combine those to have two massive or oh, one massive room one bigger room like that so that's the tiles I'm also going to make just e even bigger tiles these are actual uh, five by five size tiles uh, yeah so that is my plan that's my plan of action for this tile system so it will still be flexible and modular but it'll be quicker because you can just put down bigger tiles and the corridors themselves will be uh, bigger so it'll be just be quicker to get stuff laid down and speaking of getting things laid down we need still need to cover the locking fact or, or lock, the locking issue you can put tiles down just as they are but you get them they'll get knocked about and that's no good is it you don't want that and the solution actually hit me whilst I was setting up to record a Warhammer Quest game for the channel uh, whenever I do that I just flip a battle mat over and my battle mats I use are mouse mats mouse mat material so something like this on the back you've got a mouse mat and I flip it over really for, for the fact it's dark so on camera what you would look at is the actual game board pieces so it doesn't distract but it also has the added advantage of having a fairly non-slip uh, material on so you know you can put that on and it's not moving and so whilst doing that the solution come I don't need to worry about locking mechanisms because whenever I play my games I just flip over a a battle mat and it acts as a non-slip material obviously if you don't have a battle mat you can either buy one or you can buy a uh, I think you can buy them for garages like a non-slip material for toolboxes that go in the back of cars and in garages and so forth you can do that so job done so yeah let's get on with the video and have a look at making the tiles a quick recap and then show you the, the specific details of for these tiles quick recap on making the tiles gonna make my tiles are one and a quarter inch grid rather than one um, so because of that the tiles themselves are uh, two and a half by two and a half for single tiles or two and a half by five for double and I might make longer ones um, so I'm just gonna use the hot wire cutter that I've measured out so it's five here just so I can get a nice straight line now the previous tiles had a um, base of chipboard but they also had chipboard spaces in to allow for this gap here so you could put a uh, locking piece in and put them together and lock them in. Um, my new ones I'm not going to bother with that I am just going to use chipboard on the bottom as protection. Uh, what that will mean is there will be a little one mil thick height difference I'm not too worried about that as um, I've only got 10 of these I'm using so there will only be 10 places or you know if I'm making a corridor out of all these then it'll be one and it could be classed as a step down is a dungeon floor perfectly even no so I'm not worried so what I'm going to do come in with some glue Put that on. Uh, just make sure. I sort of I don't know if you can see this by pushing down onto a flat surface. I can sort of try and make sure it's try and make sure it's even. And then in coming with another test and just get some other tiles just to. Make sure you can put them all together and line them all up, which you can. And then, any other thing got to do now is leave that to dry. Uh, don't do this with just one; it's pointless. But just put a heavy book 
on top just to weigh it down possibly do more than one so you can put one book and cover multiple tiles leave that to dry when that's uh, dry mark a grid that is an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter and so it's divided into four coming with a uh, tool you can use a ballpoint pen or I'm using a uh, sort of sculpting tool I'm just gonna so the difference is between this and a ballpoint pen is this is rounded and it doesn't really tear as much gives a much nicer indentation and uh, which I'm doing here uh, like so and then just come in and let's put some uh, wear and tear into it, it's doing some cracks um, I'll have this crack going down and we'll link like that I think like two there we go I'm cracked and then finally a rock and just because these are corridors, I actually want them to be quite fairly uh, well worn. So it's going to be a lot of indentation. So I'm using rock for this. You could, if you wanted to, use a ting, ting foil method. I really want some deep uh, sort of gouges into this. And you notice what I'm doing is using different parts of the rock. And as I'm doing it, I'm spinning the tile around so it doesn't become uniform and that is what I'm doing for the corridors which we'll paint up in a bit so now I want to make um, some 45 degree angle pieces the reason for this is because in a lot of old school modules you'll see things where the dungeon will go vertically up and it'll just bend off at a 45 degree angle like so and you'll see that a lot um, so I want to make this piece quite easy to make bit of foam come in at two and a half uh, inches here so let's measure this two and a half put a little mark there again I need a protractor line that up with the, the protractor mark uh, a little mark at 45 degree angle Measure them like so, and then because you want the next bit to join up to here, two and a half inches here, go corner to corner, and that will be your 45 degree angle piece. Then cut that out. Once you've got that cut out, you can sort of line it your previous pieces up and just mark out. It's the easiest way of doing it to mark out that. Coming with sculpting tool and put the uh, grid mark in and then texture it up and base it as normal. For those that like some black magic in your craft, it's time to undercoat in Mod Podge and black. But if you're more of a bard in your craft, you'll certainly like this step, which is to dry brush in a grey. Dry brush of ivory tusk. And finally wash the entire piece in a homemade black wash. So rooms are made in pretty much the same way, but we're going to do something different. So we're going to look at this um, room here on the Hero Quest board, and we're just going to sort of mimic that. So we're going to have panels like this. And I'm just freehanding it just to get that feel from the game. I'm just going to add just different, pick out different details from it. I'll carry on and get this done. Also, uh, did the same texture on a um, two by four section, and also a uh, six by four section. And the nice thing about this is, you can put them together to form a bigger room. 
and these will also be painted in the same manner uh, so they'll go together really nice um gonna be talking about texturing now i could come in with the old trusty rock um give it texture like the corridors as you can see once the corridors go in you can see there is a clear difference already uh, but I don't want to what I want to do is make my own texture roller um because I don't want the corridors are heavily textured because they're more well worn I want these to have just a slight light texture so for this you could revert to uh, the old tinfoil way ball tinfoil but that would just take too long so what I'm gonna do is make my own texture roller you've got a lot of tiles to texture like I'm gonna have in this project some forthcoming projects the thought of uh, texture it can leave me a bit worried um, so what I'm gonna do is make my own sort of texture roller so instead of using the um, all the tinfoil or rock I'm gonna have a roller I'm just gonna fall over so it'll just give it a slight texture so and I'm gonna use various different materials so got some sand here some slightly thicker grit and then some, some really deep bits some uh, ballast this is actually small ballast because you don't want I don't want anything too major it's just to give it a rocky texture I don't want it too deep if I want to go deep and make any more sort of heavy texturing I shall do that by hand but I just want the general overview so I've got this just to catch all the sprinkles down because what I'm going to do now got a bit of pipe cut out doesn't really matter about the thickness just a bit of off-cut piping it's about 10 inches and I'm going to cover it in PVA glue but not I want to sort of leave about two finger widths at the end just so I can say to hold on to without touching the texture too much the uh Texture parts. All I'm going to do for this is come in with some PVA glue. I'm just going to effectively pull it all over here. I think the heavier, the better with this. I don't know if this will work with PVA. We shall find out. I really want it watered down. And then manipulate it around with a brush. To be honest, it doesn't matter if you, all of it has stuff stuck on it. And that'll just add to the final texture. heavy on just the sand give me my fairly heavy with this but not as heavy much of this but this is the palace so there's no I don't think there's any right or wrong here it's just that's wrong because I've been scraping off the paint the uh, glue it's just however you feel it should be and then what I'm going to do here is then Make sure going over the rest of it. Sand. Uh, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. And when it's dry, I'm going to go over it with some watered down PVA and let that dry. So it seals it in. Yeah, let's see how that we get on with this. And once it's dried, coming with some watered down PVA and I'm just going to drench that all over. And then once that's all covered, let it dry once more. Hopefully this will seal in the sand in place. And then with the texture roller, I can just come in and just add in some texture. And I'm just sort of spinning it around. And, and in there, hopefully you can see this. Uh, it's a nice texture on there for really quick, simple, quick roll, boom, texture. happy with that. The painting, rather than using black as this could be yellowish room, I'm going to come in with some brown undercoat. This has Mod Podge in. Uh, I made this mixture in the tavern, uh, Magnetic Tavern build. Dry brush with some Baylar Brown. And a lighter dry brush of Zamzi Desert. And this is what the rooms will look like in conjunction with the corridors and you can already see there is a clear distinction between these areas here not only in color but in the actual design of the tiles so i think i'm on to a winner here so what i'm going to do now is paint the rest of the room pieces and because i've got some that i've got like this are going to be on a brown shade and some that i want to be gray and blue so i'm going to undercoat them in slightly different ways i've got a stack here I've undercoated in brown uh, Mod Podge colour and a stack here that I've undercoated in black Mod Podge. Uh, these ones here are going to be sort of browns, reds and yellows, sort of that sort of colour floor. These here will be blues, greens and they will be grey, uh, it just won't be this grey, they'll be more a, of a bluey grey. So I'm going to get painting and quickly just highlight the sort of different designs we're going to have here you can only see this lovely wood ones here we'll cover those now okay so I thought we'd have a look at what I've done uh, with the rooms um, so a little miniature just for uh, size purposes and got some tiles some of our corridor tiles here just to have a color comparison the first one to look at is one we've already just seen is this one I won't go over this one uh, too much, I've already seen it, so you can just sort of see that's its colour comparison, see how it really, you can really notice the difference between this one and um, the corridor, uh, and we've already seen that I've got a big piece, medium piece and a small piece, but let's have a look at the rest of what I dubbed the, uh, the brown uh, undercoat pile, um, so the first how I did was this. Um, I've only got this size because uh, I quickly decided that this was a lot of effort um, just to get this. It just took too long. I quite like it. Whenever I need a storeroom, I'm going to use utilize this. Um, it was undercoated in the, the um, burnt under Mod Podge mix, and then I dry brushed it with Dryac Bark, and then Steel Legion Drab. Uh, I also, um, before I did all that, I obviously uh, carved in a uh, wood plank uh, pattern and then textured it with a uh, steel wire brush and then added in the little dots and nails. That took ages. But we can see here, you can really see the difference between this and if I was just to quickly do that, you'd be able to tell that that's a corridor, that's a room and that's a really small room model here one thing you'll notice there's no grid on this I figured room you don't often need I figured you didn't need a grid one you, if you're surrounded by a corridor you can see that it's four deep so you can tell that that's going to be uh, 20 foot because each square is five foot 
So you know if you're over here you've got a movement of 30, you know you can get out. Obviously, no doors yet, so we'll cover that in a future video. So we've got that piece. Um, sticking with the wood, I decided to do a uh, parquet uh, type floor. And what I should do as we go along is if it's influenced from Warhammer Quest or uh, Hero Quest, I'll sort of add in just a little show, little picture showing you what I was influenced by. But this is from uh, Hero Quest, so you can see the parquet floor here. And obviously, if we add the previous brown one in, you can see there is a clear difference between this and this so these are two separate rooms so again I've got a big bit small bit and a medium bit so I can form multiple different I can have two big rooms one really big room three uh, individual room that's my thinking with this so I can quickly lay down stuff uh, the next one is uh, again most of these are hero quest influenced uh, this one again big medium small is a, oh, has a weird color tone it has it's a kind of a reddish brown but I achieved this by uh, having the brown undercoat dry brushing in talon flesh I guess you could use the cardigan flesh now <laughs> still called it cardigan rather than cardigan flesh and then it was washed with uh rightling flesh shade i just got some red ink and did a splash of blood and yeah again you can really sell the difference between rooms just really uh rooms and corridors and a hero here yep that's one of my favorite rooms i didn't think i'd like it too much uh, next up we are moving into the yellows so again big small medium and it's sort of a triangle checkerboard effect inspired by hero crest uh, with this you've got to make sure you get the room lined up properly don't it leads to all manner of issues and problems uh, yeah but Anyway, that's this is the room. There we go. That's how it goes. <clears throat> nice and yellow. I'm feeling really happy with how these have come out. I'm finally getting the tiles I want. Next up, I'm on to a sort of reddish room. Now this one I was really worried about initially. I've only got one of these. It's the only size I've got. Uh, because I thought it would be too red, too ominous looking having a red room so uh, this is inspired by uh, a hero crest room and so this was uh, dry or overbrushed in corn red and then some of the lighter reds i picked out in astroroth red a dry brush color and then taking inspiration from the flesh chamber room <laughs> the flesh color room picked out some of them in uh, the talon flesh and this has actually become one of my favorite rooms now just because it is so visually stunning it's it's reddish now rather than red so you, when you put it down people aren't going to instantly think oh it's an evil room because you don't really have an evil-ish room so yeah pleased with how that came out uh, again this is another one that's coming up that i was worried about it's this one here so uh, this was painted in um, Baylor Brown, I believe, first of all, and then I've got no other use for it. I painted it using uh, Plague Bearer Flesh. Um, actually, probably won't ever use this for anything else, really. I bought this expecting it to be a good undead flesh tone, but it's far too illuminous green for what I thought it would be. But for this, turn out for this room on Hero Rest, it's brilliant it's got this brown green look which is what i was going for so i love that and again, i keep doing this i love putting them together the contrast clearly see two separate rooms and a corridor yes the uh, next room is inspired by warhammer crest it's the uh, orange 
room with the spiked macing, which I forget what it's called off the top of my head. But it also has little bits of grass in it, so I've used static grass. Uh, you can see me actually make this in the Warhammer Quest tile video. Um, like that I did just after starting making dungeon tiles. Uh, yeah, this is a good favourite of mine as well. It just looks good. And our final room in the browns is a checkerboard. Just one big room, this one. Just wanted one big room just to... Uh, for ease, if I change my mind, I, can, I haven't put any backing on so I can still <laughs> cut it up. But I think I'm just going to leave this as a big room. So if ever I need a largish room, I'm just going to slam this down. And this is a favourite of mine. So this was uh, Baylar Brown, then dry brushed with Talon Sand, and then picked out these colours in um, Graveyard Earth, Steel Legion Drab. So yeah brilliant so now we are on to the the shades of grey um, now for these I had to be really careful um, so I think I wanted to clash with these so they're all undercoated in black Mod Podge mix the first one I did was perhaps my first foray into odd shaped rooms for uh, stuff like Lost Minds of Fendelva, which is a f uh, three by two room, just a really small room, because there is a room like this in Lost Minds of Fendelva. And so this was painted in Dark Reaper undercoat, and then I picked it out in a turquoise color, which I forget, but just to get a nice blue type room. Next up, I wanted a nice light grey room. So this was inspired by, um, I should say that was a room inspired by uh, Hero Quest. This was inspired by Warhammer Crest, and it was a grey room. So this was just overbrush with Dawnstone and then uh, dry brushed with Administratum Grey. And you, this was a good experiment because it's now, even though it's grey, I haven't done any wash on it, so it's quite light. Uh, which I wanted because with the dry brush over the black it's got definition there but you can clearly see that it's master it is grey two different greys which I like uh, this is another hero crest room and another grey room but this is a, a blue grey so again you can clearly see the difference this is probably about as close as match as I come across in the uh, construction this was Reaper Grey overbrush and a rust grey dry brush so it's got that nice grey um, look but without still not matching this so if you do want grey dungeons you can still have them here I've made these, these are uh, again Hero Crest rooms, but these are almost black. This is, uh, it's a coat of arms paint actually, which I forget what it's called. Um, Panzer Grey is what it was overbrushed with, and then I dry brushed it with um, Shadow Grey, which I forget what it's called now. Uh, oh, I've only got the old Shadow Grey version of it, but I think it's called Shadow Fang or Fang now. I've got four of these for a particularly big room, so I just felt I'd need a big room, perhaps a boss battle, which is why I left it quite dark as well, that just ominous, big ominous room, or obviously two large rooms or four individual rooms. So again, Whilst it's got, I've got flexibility, but quickness to set up as well. So once more, you can see that whilst it is grey, it's a different grey to this. And uh, just flipping back to the uh, other one, which is a different grey to this, which is a different grey to this. So here you can see I've got grey corridor, 
grey room, grey room, grey room, but you can clearly see the difference there. So I feel I've achieved what I set out to do, even with using greys, by changing colour and pattern. Uh, next up is Hero Quest once more, and it's checkboard. Uh, so, as well as marking out the big, big, big squares, uh, I went back and not as deeply, but marked out, divided those squares into quarters, and then just painted it each square white. And again, like before, you need to make sure you set them up right so the, the pattern matches. Obviously don't need to worry about being able to see the rooms you can clearly see this is a room uh, pleased with how that came out uh, still with hero quest I think most of these now are hero quest I only took a few Warhammer quest inspirations a green room just again really add a splash color to your dungeon so pray it this was a acrylic green I can't remember what it's called. It's just my standard green I use for green earth it's called for doing big projects. It was then dry brushed with uh, Lauren Forest and then a wall boss green before a Corlia green shade was applied. Next up is a red checkerboard room. I've only got two of these. Uh, I've got a large and a medium, but these can be, be two separate rooms or maybe an L-shaped room. Um, so this was corn red, dry brushed with the Astaroth red, and then washed with the a crimson shade. Games Workshop, forget what it's called, but the Crimson Shade they do. Uh, yeah, again, wanted to not have just because it's red, didn't want an om make it ominous, but I think I've achieved that. Just wanted to be a red checker groom. And the last room tile is a big one again, like how we ended the brown batch, and this is a uh, Dark Reaper and Rust Grey. So whilst I've already got one of them, you can see the pattern is different on them. So we'll find that rust grey ones. Yeah, so here we are. These were both painted the same. Uh, is it that one? No, it's not. Hang on. It's this one here. So these are both painted the same, but you could clearly see that these would be separate rooms. Okay, so here we are going to set up. So what I do when I play board games and stuff is just use a battle map with mouse map material and when you lay down the uh, tiles you know you really struggle to move them so when you butt them up against each other they are in place you know you're not gonna you're not gonna knock them with ease I mean sure you can tap them and get them to move even that is not moving that much so you don't really need a locking mechanism if you just lay down a mouse mat so what I'm going to do now is use the tiles to set up some different layouts so first up how about something that's quite gridless now this is the layout for the hooded man in or tavern from uh, Night of Blood Old World Adventure this is gridless and what we're going to be doing is laying out the tavern bit here so it consists of a main tap room kitchen storeroom and a corridor with stairs and we're not doing stairs in a moment but that will be in a future video so all we're doing is the rooms and the corridor and if i was going to do that that is how i'd lay it out that's quick and easy so you've got the bar here the kitchen here using this checkerboard one so it makes sense for a kitchen storeroom and then the corridor. So all we need to do in the, in the next video is add in some doors. But that is how I would do this room. And so the next one we'll look at is from the classic module, Castle Cool Ground Beyond, because this is a big layout with lots of rooms and corridors. So I wanna see how it matches up. 
Um, it's not going to be a perfect one to one because we don't have any circle ones. Uh, I'll probably use squares for that if I set this up anyway. But it's just really concentrating on this middle section here. And so we'd have the big double corridor here, no double door here. I'll just pan up. So you can see, whilst it's really busy, which I really like, you can clearly see a distinction between the corridor going all the way around and the rooms here. It has a green courtyard, so I just made a tile for that, which is just grassed. But even without the doors, you can see the distinction to, to what you can get into and what you can't. It helps if I uh, smidge that in together more. But... So I'm really happy with the, how these are going, but there's one more I've got set up. So the final setup, I want to do is the red brand hideout. I'm not going to, can't do the, um, the Goblin Trunks, that's all caves. We haven't got caves yet. That'll be a future video. So I just want to do the red brand hideout. Um, one thing I did when I did my original tiles was convert it because these all like powers of three. So I converted it to powers of two, which is what I've got here. You probably won't recognize this from the first ever uh, tile video I did. So using these new tiles, that looks like something like that. Uh, not that impressive because we don't have the cavern tiles in the middle, but you can see we have this room here, the corridors, big room there. Some rooms together separated by corridors. I think a lot of these are secret, aren't they? That's uh, the big room where you'd have the water fountain and such uh, pieces. We have that in place, but even so, even without the doors, you can already see that there is distinguishable areas. Um, so speaking of doors, I'm going to leave the video here. Um, and I think the next video we'll have to work on is the doors then. So uh, until that one, guys, take care.